Well, in a flash, there was a twist on a day that we thought it'd just go nice and easy, but um, Saxo really lit things up from the get-go. They did it. Well, actually, six guys were away, and I think they were really surprised to be caught at that point when Omega Pharma decided to put the hammer down. We talked about that, that, you know, the team said, let's go, let's use this wind, and they set things up into an echelon, and that really blew the peloton apart. So you can see with 110k to go already, this is the front group here, and then there's a second group where we know that Greipel and those guys are isolated, and here's Omega Pharma really driving things on the front. Uh, Already up the road, you can see how the wind is clearly coming from the left and the most protected place is to, you know, be here. Uh, and all of these guys are desperately just trying to hold on a wheel. So what is it about the, the effect of wind that echelons form and, and why do these gaps come? Well, if you think about when you're sitting on someone's wheel into, say, a headwind or a light crosswind, you're getting some protection. But if the wind's literally coming from your side, you're protected when you're on the left-hand side or the other side of that rider. And there's only a certain amount of road that can fit, you know, normally 10 or 12 guys before mm. you're in the gutter. So if you're protecting a rider, as we'll see on this next bit of footage, um, actually this is where we see Belkin, the team with the two Dutch riders who really got a lot of advantage out of today's result, and Amiga Pharma just totally keeping the pace high and protecting their riders. Two complete different um, scenarios for those guys. Belkin are riding for the GC because Valverde's dropped and a lot of other GC contenders. At uh, Quickstep are riding purely for the stage Absolutely. Win. When we see this next uh, overhead shot of the groups, this is actually the front right. group that has been completely blistered into three. It comes back together again, again. but what's really interesting is as the wind is coming from the left, this guy here is, is the last guy who's getting a reasonable sit. These guys are all just hanging on for dear life and they're working really hard and that's why if you let a gap form, it's really hard to bridge up again and then that 20 guys behind you. So if one of those guys can't keep up in that less sheltered spot, then the brakes come. That's exactly. Right. And, and if you're smart and you're cool about it, you just swing out to the left and take them with you. You first make a gap of two or three lengths so they can't jump straight in. And then you pull out the left and hopefully everyone follows you. And then you right. get your another echelon going behind them. You remember we saw this with great effect when Astana did it to um, Chris Moreau. But this was really uh, the most decisive move. Saxo Bank instantaneously said, 30k to go, let's split things up. And here, this is where Froome's been yeah. isolated. So he's back there, there's Cadell with him and... and um, Again, no teammates by this point, but Contador's team with Michael Rogers, Nicholas Roche, Bernardi, they were so impressive. I think yeah. Rogers said this was the hardest day he's ever had in the Tour de France, harder wow. than any mountain stage. He Big could barely call. get on the bus afterwards. Exactly. I mean, you've got six guys there. These guys finished fourth in the team's time trial down in Nice, so they're very, very handy at, at riding together. Froome, he's in big trouble. He's got not one teammate behind him. Actually, Contador also said uh, at one point it was only 10 seconds and he kept thinking, this isn't enough. Mm. But they just kept pushing. You know, mm. it, was, it was really impressive effort by and them. And it was a so with the finish now, you can see Cavs nicely tucked in and, uh, with Sagan and, you know, he sprints to the line. I think he said he exerted more wattage getting across to this group of 14 that got away than, than he did in the sprint finish. <laughs> yeah, that was probably the easiest 200 metres of his day right there to win to win the record amount of road stages. There's his mate Stegman celebrating. Yep. So there were 14 in this front group, six yep. Saxo and Molema and Tendam of the Belkin team. Now you can just see now with the, at the 109 mark, this is when Andre Grapel led in for 15th place. So there's some points for him, but Froome there on his own in this group of 30 or so that finished 109 down with also Cadell Evans. Some panic in those faces there going, oh, we're going to get back to the bus and be in trouble. Great one, Doc. Lovely work.